This video is about related rates, which is another application of the derivative. And in this set of material, we're going to be looking at the same types of applications that we've been looking at previously. So we might be looking at supplier demand, profit, revenue, cost. And then we're also going to be looking at some more geometry type um, applications. But in all of these applications, the, the twist is that we are going to assume that our variables maybe Q, P, they all depend on time. So every single problem in this section depends on time. So why would we want to do that? Well, suppose we have a demand function and we're told that demand is increasing by 150 units per week and we want to know what's the impact on the profit or the revenue. Or maybe we're told that the price is being lowered by $15 per week. Again, what is the impact on maybe the profit, revenue, cost, or maybe even the supplier demand? So if our profit function depends on Q and we're trying to find the der its derivative with respect to time, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So Suppose we have a supply function, q equals 0.1p squared plus 3p, and we want to know how q is changing with respect to time. So our goal would be to figure out what dq dt is. Now notice here that I don't have any t's in this problem. There, you don't see any t's, but we are going to assume that q and p both depend on time. So if we're trying to find the derivative of q with respect to t, what we're going to have to do is take the derivative of q with respect to p, just like we have been doing a lot. We can take the derivative of q with respect to p here, but then we're going to multiply by the derivative of p with respect to t. So p also is a function of t, and so we are going to have to multiply by its derivative. So it's it's our inside function in a sense. So that's where we always have to multiply by this dp dt. So our basic steps in these are first we have to figure out what information are they given have they given us and what is our goal and oftentimes this is is the hardest step. And sometimes in this step we have to write some sort of relationship between the, the variables. So maybe you need to build the profit function or build a, a distance formula. Next, once we do that, we're going to use the chain rule to find its derivative with respect to t. So for instance, in that one that we were just talking about, our supply function, we would, since I don't have t in this function at all, and I know that both q and p depend on t, if I'm going to find the derivative with respect to t, I'm going to have to use that chain rule. Once I have done my derivative, I'm going to substitute in the values and solve for that goal. And then finally, as usual, we're going to write a sentence to answer the question. Okay, so let's read this one. It says, the number of portable CD players you're prepared to supply a retail outlet every week is given by the formula Q equals 0.1P squared plus 3P, where P is the price it offers you. The retail outlet is currently offering you $40 per CD player, and if the price it offers decreases at a rate of $2 per week, how will this affect the number that you supply? So in this, this statement of this problem, we have a, few, a couple of key sentences here. So it says the retail outlet is currently offering you $40 per CD player. So that is telling us what our price is right now. So that tells us P equals 40. In this next sentence, it says the price it offers is decreasing at a rate of $2 per week. Now hopefully you're thinking, okay, well that sounds like a rate of change, and it is. It's the rate P is changing with respect to time and it is going to be negative 2. And it's negative because we see this word decreasing. Now, in the last part of this sentence, they ask us, how will this affect the number you supply? OK, so that's our goal because it's, it's our question. And when they're asking us, how will this affect the number you supply, they're wanting us to say, OK, well, how will this change our supply? How will our supply change based on these changes? So that is the rate of change in our supply or the derivative of q with respect to t. Step two, 
we're going to use the chain rule to find the derivative with respect to t. So we're going to do this in two ways. First, we're going to just use the strain, chain rule straight from what I had written before. So we have dq dt equals dq dp times dp dt. So this dq dp, this part here, is just the derivative of as we have been doing it all quarter long. So I have dq dt, so the derivative of our q here with respect to our price is going to be 0.2p plus 3. So I just took the derivative of this function here. And then I need to multiply by dp dt. So that sh shouldn't have been too hard. Now we're going to use a second method. I'm going to do the second method over here. And this second method is particularly useful when you have a, f a relationship that isn't solved for one particular variable. So for instance, we would need to use this type of um, method if we had our formula was something like x squared plus y squared equals 100. I don't have it solved for x or y, so I can't really use this um, dq dt is dq dp because I, I, I don't have the I, I don't have y as a function of x. I just have this relationship between them. Our function is q equals 0.1 p squared plus 3p. And if I go to take the derivative of this, I'm going to go term by term. So the derivative of q is dq dt. The derivative of this second term, this 0.1p squared, that is going to give us, we're going to take the derivative of that just like we usually do, 0.2p using the power rule. But then I took the derivative of a p, so I need to multiply by dp dt. Okay. This last one, I have 3p. If I take its derivative, I'm just going to have 3, because the derivative of 3p is just 3. But then I took the derivative of a p, so I have to multiply by dp dt. Now hopefully, if you look at these two, they look pretty much the same, except for in this version, the dp dt has been distributed across both terms. Now we've got our, we're ready to substitute in our values, but let's first make sure that we, we know what we're trying to find and make sure that we have all the numbers that we need. So our goal was dq dt, so that's this part right here. That's my goal. And um, in order to, to figure out what this is, I need to know this p, but I do know that. That's right there. And I need to know dp dt, and I, I know that. Sometimes we're going to have to do a little side calculation to figure that out. So our dq dt is going to equal 0.2 times 40 plus 3 times negative 2. I just plugged in all the values that I knew. And if you multiply this out, you should get negative 22. Now let's talk about the units on this. So the units of q are cd players. So this is going to be cd players. And the units on our time are is weeks, so it's going to be CD players per week. Last thing we need to do is write a sentence to answer our question. And the sentence looks like the supply will drop by 22 CD players per week. We could add a little bit, a few more details, but that pretty much answers the question that they asked us. Okay, so here's a second example. It says you can now sell 50 cars per month at $28,000 per car, but the demand is decreasing by two cars per month each month. Each car costs you $15,000. That's a cost that you incur just to get the car on your lot so you can sell it. What is the fastest that you can raise the price before the profit starts to drop? Let, let's first just make sure that we understand the different variables that we're talking about. Well, we have they talk about price, so let's use P for price. They talk about um, demand, so let's use Q for our demand. They talk about profit, so um, so we don't get confused between lowercase p and uppercase p. Let, let's use um, big F for profit. And then because we're going to need to talk about profit, we often have revenue and cost. So remember, profit equals revenue minus cost. Before we actually start figuring out what given information or what information they've given us, 
let's just write our, our profit function. So revenue is always P times Q, and it's going to be minus the cost. And remember, they tell us in the problem that it costs $15,000 per car, so it's going to be minus 15,000 Q. Okay, so I want you to pause the video now, and I want you to take the sentences here and figure out which values these go with. So you want to know what that goes with. So 50 cars per month, $28,000 per car, and demand is decreasing by two cars per month each month. So write down what those three values represent. Okay, you're back. So hopefully you got Q equals 50, P equals 28,000, and DQ DT equals negative 2. Now, in the last part of this sentence, it says, what is the fastest that you can raise the price? So what is the fastest you can raise the price? So our goal has to do with how our price is changing. So our goal is going to be DP DT. But there's another part of this that they tell us. It says, before your profit starts to drop. So we don't want our profit to drop. We want our profit to remain the same. So if our profit remains the same, that means DF DT is going to be 0. That one's a little bit tricky to, to come up with, but you would have gotten it later because you would have known that you needed one more value. Pause the video again and see if you can take the derivative of our F. So here our F is P times Q minus 15,000 Q. And one hint is that since we have P times Q, you're going to need to use the product rule on that particular part of that in order to find its derivative. Okay, so you're back. The derivative of f is going to be df dt. The derivative of p, we're going to use the product rule, so we're going to take the derivative of the first, that's going to be dp dt times the second, which is q, plus p, so leave p the same this time and take the derivative of q, so p times dq dt, minus, now we're taking the derivative of the second term, we just get 15,000, but I took the derivative of q, so I need to multiply by dq dt. Okay, so let's substitute in our, our known values. So I have 0 equals, and before I do that, remember our goal here is dp dt, so let, let's circle this. So that's what we're looking for. So 0 equals dp dt times q, q is 50, plus p, that's 28,000, times dq dt, that's negative 2, minus 15,000, times dq dt, that's negative 2. And if you simplify here, you should get 0 equals 50 dp dt minus 26,000. And if you solve for dp dt, you get dp dt equals 520. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that we'll need to raise that price by $520 per week in order to keep the profit the same. So we should write that in a sentence to answer our question. So we should raise the price by $500, $520 per car per week to keep the profit from dropping. So that's it for this video. There'll be a second video on related rates that has to do with more geometry-based applications.